financially, what went wrong with my retirement? Hey folks, my name is Joe. I retired at 54 years old. I'm currently 60, so five and a half years of retirement. Looking back on my journey, sharing my mistakes and things that went well for me, uh, lucky things that, that uh, happened to me in my retirement to maybe inspire you to retire just a, one year earlier, maybe two years earlier. I get a lot of those comments. Please keep them coming. They inspire me to make more videos. And that's the purpose of my channel, really just sharing my journey, trying to uplift you and drive out a little bit of fear as you're uh, needing to jump into the warm waters of retirement. So I've got five bad things that weren't expected that happened financially to me during retirement over the last five and a half years, five of them. And then just to end on a positive note, I got four things that went well and you know, they're pretty good. So let's get into it. Number one, COVID canceled my retire to something. So I chose to retire after a 32 year career in manufacturing to do some private consulting on reliability and maintenance. That happens to be my expertise, not the subject of this video. But that forced me to pivot into doing virtual coaching. And I wrote a book and that's all kind of turned out pretty well. Uh, this YouTube channel, uh, I wouldn't have made this YouTube channel for, uh, on retirement if, you, if uh, COVID didn't happen. So that was kind of an interesting twist. I think the message there is be prepared to pivot at all times, uh, no matter what happens. But COVID canceled my plans. Financially, I was planning on working one week a month, you know, when I was 54. And I, I did that for just a couple months. I took six months off right after I retired. And then I started working, had some uh, good uh, income coming in, uh, working with plants, and that got canceled. Shut down. Number two, my retiree medical from my company uh, went from $600 a month. That was this is decision I made when I retire. It's going to be $600 a month and increasing a little bit each, each year. Uh, they stuck it to us. So, uh, you know, if you want to cut cost, don't upset your current employees. Who cares about the retirees? That's what happened to me. Went to almost $2,000 a month. So I got out of that and went with uh, Indiana Farm Bureau. I've got a video on that. My popular videos, if you hit more, I've got a list of maybe 10, 12 videos there that are real popular. Uh, and I got, the first one is medical. That's the one everybody asked me about. And so take a look at that. So medical uh, insurance, um, yeah, it was a surprise. Number three, inflation. I'm telling you, inflation wasn't even on the radar for me. You know, hey, let's put it in at two, three percent. It's been that way forever, uh, for 20 years, um, and didn't work out that way. Number four, my travel expenses are a little higher than what I was expecting, but this is all self-inflicted. <laughs> I'm loosening up a little bit more renting a little nicer car, staying in a little nicer places, going out to eat a little more. And uh, so I am spending a little bit more, a few thousand dollars a year, more than what I was expecting, but, uh, but really by choice. And I'll explain why in the, what's gone well, that, that'll make sense. Number five was dental expenses. Yikes. Uh, just so happened that this was my wife, not me, <laughs> but it could have just as easily have been me. Uh, dental implants, a root canal, those will set you back in one year about $8,000. <laughs> so um, I've got dental insurance as part of my farm bureau, but it's really pretty weak. It covers, you know, you know, of uh, cleanings, maybe a quarter of the cleaning uh, expenses and then of um, the major um uh, procedures, um, probably covers 15 to 20% of those. But, uh, so yeah, I got an $8,000 bill this year. That was a surprise. So that's really all that's gone bad for me. Inflation's by far the biggest one, I would say. Retiring medical, all these were big. COVID, 
took out some income, retiree medical, increased my expenses, inflation ate into my expenses. You know, probably the biggest number isn't inflation now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, but let's move on. Hey, four good things that happened. Number one, my base expenses, base living, you know, just living in my house, not, not doing the go-go spending, but just daily life is about 80% of what I anticipated in my retirement planning. 80%. I've made videos on that before. So I overestimated a few things. We cut the cable uh, was a big one. Uh, expenses associated with our second car, not driving near as much that, that brought things down. And just, you know, I do some of the work around my house that we used to pay for. Um, just getting insurance quotes, um, you know, on homeowner's insurance, auto insurance, you know, just able to dive into the details. It's fun when you got a lot of time to go in and save some money. Number two, good thing that happened, you know, I'm making money from mentoring. I do have a mentoring service. I got about five people I talk to each month. I bring in some money that way where I'm coaching them. These are plant managers and maintenance managers not on retirement, okay? So don't reach out to me on retirement. Um, I'm making some YouTube income. Roughly, I'll say all videos, you know, I'm making about $30,000 a year uh, from YouTube. I mean, uh, it's a part-time job, but I do enjoy the coaching. I enjoy trying to help people with my story, but it's, it's not insignificant. You bring in $30,000. Now that's all before taxes, okay? So that ends up being about 20. <laughs> okay. Um, and a lot of you, you know, you think of, boy, you're still working. You're still working and, and say that as a negative thing. You know, I'm only 60 years old. I want to contribute. I want to create. I don't want to just sit back and become bitter and judge others. I want to create. I enjoy making these videos and helping people. Your comments help a lot because I answer a lot of these videos are just answers to your questions. And I love doing that. I love um, helping. Uh, and as uh, a buddy, I can't think of his uh, uh, think of his name. I'm trying to uplift the human condition here myself just a little bit. Can't think of that guy's name on video. Sabado, Sabado, that retirement cat. Sabado. Type in Sabado uh, on YouTube. Check him out. Number three, my investment returns. You know. <laughs> My bucket three is slightly over 11%. This is my long-term money that I haven't touched yet. It's compounded annual growth rate, 11%. My optimistic numbers that I put into my retirement plan, new retirement, I put in nine. I'm making 11. So five and a half years making 11 is great. My bucket two, which I made some changes. Uh, I've never been a bond person, bond fund person. I've been an all stock guy my whole life. But about, you know, let's say six, eight, nine months ago, I shifted uh, with the big drop in uh, our increase in interest rates. I think there's uh, an opportunity in bonds right now because I believe in the future rates are going to come down, Fed rates are going to come down, which are going to inflate bond performance. So, the last 2023, this bond fund that I own um, is getting, you know, it's returned 6.92, almost 7%. And I captured maybe two thirds of that. Um, now the, the bond fund, the same bond fund was down 13% in 2022, but I didn't own it then. So if you look at history of bond funds right after there's big uh, Fed increases, you know, a year or two of big fund increases, the next couple of years are really nice. So. Uh, I'm riding that wave, and you can call this market timing. Uh, yeah, maybe you're right, <laughs> but I'm doing that, and I've, uh, I'm not 90-10, 95-5 in uh, stocks to bonds anymore. I'm, I'm targeting a little closer to 80-20, but uh, I'm probably 85-15, 85-15. Uh, so that's bucket three is doing great. Bucket two is doing great. And my bucket one in my retirement planning, I was planning on getting 0%. I'm telling you, I had 0% of my bucket one money, which is money for my first four years, next four years. And uh, I'm getting four to five and a quarter in that uh, bucket. So I'm just delighted. I'm delighted with my bucket performance. 
this is resulting in me spending just a little bit more on travel um, than I was planning. Okay, so I'm spending some of my nest egg. Number four, um, and this is holistically looking at uh, my uh, investments. You know, I retired five and a half years ago, and I actually have more money now than when I decided to retire. Yes, the market is at new highs, but it's been a pretty wild ride. You know, you know, we had the drop in 2020 for a short period of time, and then we had 2022 happen and just, you know, went down quite a bit. Uh, but buckets allow me, you know, I just reviewed my buckets, bucket one, two, and three, four years in bucket one, you know, four years in bucket two, the rest in bucket three. It's kind of what I'm targeting. Buckets allow me not to emotionally react to anything. And, and that's really been the, uh, the source of my peace of mind, my ability to have my bucket three just grow, 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 and grow. So there you are. Five things that didn't go well for me in my retirement planning, didn't go as planned. Four things that did go uh, better than planned. So uh, what are your fears? If you're pre-retirement, what are your fears going into retirement? What are they? A lot of people just say running out of money. Number two, for those of you that are already retired, which of your fears came true? Let me know in the comments if you had some fears and did they come true. I think it will inspire some of the people listening to this uh, when they read the comments to hear your stories as well. So you're not just learning from Joe. Let me know in the comments. It's Joe out.